engines throb and leap to life. They start out for Kiel. Heading east on a great adventure. The bow gunner ready in the forward turret. The navigator amidships busy at his charts, plotting the course. And in the tail, another gunner. A solitary sentinel protecting the ship from attack from the rear. But it's a long time before there's any excitement yet, except for the wireless operator. See if you can pick up Mr. Middleton. on their course now for an hour of steady flying. The sight of a ship below is a welcome break in the monotony of sea. This fire ahead, sir. Ours or theirs? Ours, I think. through the sky. Getting close now. Time to take up battle stations. The pilot goes back to his controls. The navigator now constantly at his elbow. Changing course in about five minutes. Let me know. Time for the rear gunner to go back to the tail. The bomb aimer leaves the forward gun. The wireless operator goes forward. No need for wireless now. He steps over the bomb aimer who crouches down, getting his sights lined up, and he makes his way to the gun turret. Alter course to 110 degrees.
Good show. Got him right in the hole. Now for home. What's the course? German pursuit planes were shaken off. The flight of bombers returned home. They had dropped their bombs, not upon unfortified towns, but on a heavily protected naval base, a legitimate target of modern warfare, an objective bristling with anti-aircraft guns and guarded with fighters. They came back to their home aerodrome, but not all came back. But they had achieved what they set out to do, and they drew first blood of the war that was none of their making. It was an epic of the skies carried out with brilliant dash and matchless courage. And although you have been watching a reconstruction of that raid upon the Kiel Canal, the men you now see stepping out of these bombers are the officers and men of the RAF who actually carried out that heroic raid. These are the men who flew the planes and dropped the bombs on Hitler's battleships. <laughs>